There are a lot of logistics that go into planning an international trip. Some things are more obvious, like flights, hotels, and transportation. But some things might slip your mind until you're just about to leave on your trip. Like how to use your cell phone internationally. I actually get this question a lot about how do you use your phone on an international trip or what's the best way to use your phone internationally. So I thought it'd be good to put together all the different options that you have when trying to use your phone on an international trip. Option one is gonna to be to contact your current provider to see what their international plans are. It's important to know that T-Mobile does have 3G for free worldwide and AT&T just introduced LTE free in Central and South America. But if you're going somewhere else, it's typically around $10 a day to add on an international plan that works in 210 countries. So even if you're visiting multiple countries in one trip, it'll still work the entire time. But $10 a day can really add up, so this option is really only viable for short-term travel. Option number two is going to be to switch your phone plan to T-Mobile since, like I mentioned before, they do have free international service everywhere in the world. This might be an expensive upfront cost, but if you travel frequently, it's probably your best option in the long run. Over the past five years, I've traveled to numerous different countries and lived in different countries, and my boyfriend who has T-Mobile with his family plan has never had to pay any extra fees, and he's had service everywhere we've been, which is been Europe, South America, and Asia. I will say though, it's typically only 3G. Of course, some places are better and he will have LTE, but it's usually only 3G, which isn't the fastest. But at least it works and it's free. And then of course, obviously every time we go back home, his phone service still works. So it's a great long-term option no matter where you are in the world. Option number three is a prepaid tourist SIM card. You do have the option to order this before you actually leave on your trip. I've used this card from Amazon a few times and it worked out really well. It's $18 with 12 gigabytes of data valid for 30 days in 71 countries. So honestly, not too bad of a deal, but if you do want to save even more money, I highly recommend getting that prepaid tourist SIM card once you arrive in the country, not at the airport, but pretty much any convenience store within the city center, you're going to be able to get these prepaid tourist SIM cards. Most of them will even have like posters or signs outside saying that they sell the tourist SIM cards there. So you can pop in there, ask them what their different SIM card options are, depending on how many gigs you need. And then once you buy it, they'll usually even help you put it in your phone and actually set it up right then and there. This is the option that I usually go with just because it's the cheapest option. The only caveat for that is that you're not going to have your same phone number that you have back in the States, obviously, which doesn't really bother me, but I know that that's a huge issue for some people. But if keeping your same number is really important to you, you can always travel with two phones. One with your home phone number, of course, you put it on airplane mode, only use it on Wi-Fi. And then the second phone, you have your local SIM card in it so you can use it when you're out and about. And if it's really a problem for you to have two different numbers and or two different phones, you can use websites like Google voice to have all your calls that are going to your regular phone number automatically forwarded to your new international number for the duration of your trip. Now, the only caveat with this entire option of using the local prepaid SIM card is that a lot of the newest smartphones actually don't have physical SIM cards anymore or even physical SIM card slots. So that leads me to option four, which is almost the same as option three, except it's an eSIM instead of a physical SIM card. There are a ton of different eSIM apps that you can download directly from the app store that'll work anywhere in the world. I took a look at a few of them, and in my personal opinion, the top two choices are Airlo and Dent. Airlo is probably the most popular one because it works in over 190 countries. When you're selecting the SIM you want to buy, it will clearly show you how many gigs for how many days with the price and how many countries it works in. And to install it, it's pretty simple. There are step-by-step -step directions if you want to install it directly, scan the QR code, or install it manually. And the next option is Dent, and Dent actually only covers 60 countries, so make sure to check if it's going to work in whatever country you're planning on visiting. But there are two main reasons why I really like Dent. The first one is that the gigabytes that you buy are actually valid for 365 days, whereas most other eSIMs have a set time. It's usually between 7 and 30. So this means whatever data package you buy, if you're planning on doing multiple trips, let's say to three different places in Europe that are all covered by Dent, you can use that one SIM card for the entire year and you don't have to keep getting one every trip that you go on. And the second reason why I really like Dent is because they have a gigastore where you can actually buy and sell unused data. So let's say you bought a 12 gigabyte eSIM card and on your trip or in that year you only use nine gigabytes, typically that three extra gigs that you didn't use would just go to waste. But here you can actually put those three gigs in the giga store and someone else can purchase them. So you're able to make a little bit of your money back, which is super awesome. And on the other side, you're actually able to save yourself quite a bit of money if you're checking the giga store and buying people's unused data rather than purchasing new data. Usually it will have a shorter lifespan, of course, maybe seven to 30 days versus the entire 365 days that you normally would get if you're purchasing new data, but you're still going to be able to save yourself some money. Now, honestly, in 
my opinion, eSIMs are a lot more expensive than doing the option three of the prepaid tourist SIM card. I think most people use it because of the convenience factor, but personally, I would only use this option if you have a brand new smartphone that doesn't have a physical SIM card holder, so you actually can't do option three. So this would just be the next best option. But it's nice to know that this is an option and you can easily download the app from anywhere you are in the world. Maybe you bought a local SIM card or you purchased international data from Verizon or AT&T and it's just not working. You can download the app there on the spot and start using it. So it's really that sense of security knowing that you're always gonna have a backup option even if you didn't choose this option as your first option. And we're at option five. This last option is the cheapest option. If you really don't need your phone on a day-to-day -day basis, just turn off data roaming, put it on airplane mode, otherwise the fees will be outrageous, and just use your phone when you're on Wi-Fi. In today's day and age, there's Wi-Fi pretty much everywhere, you know, cafes, back at your hotel. Some cities are even offering free Wi-Fi in really popular public places like squares, parks, cathedrals, things like that. Or you can even take this a step further and download Wi-Fi map, and it'll show you where all the Wi-Fi networks are around you, including clearly labeling the public networks nearby that don't require a password. My first time living out of the country was actually to study abroad in Barcelona back in 2016. I was there for an entire six months and this is actually the option that I picked. I didn't want to pay for an international phone plan, nor did I want to pay for a local Spanish SIM card. So I just turned my phone off on airplane mode for six months and I only used it on Wi-Fi. And honestly, it was completely fine. I actually kind of enjoyed unplugging a little bit. My screen time was obviously a lot lower and there were so many public Wi-Fi areas that it didn't really bother me. I didn't really feel like I needed my phone all the time. And here's a little bonus. So no matter which option you decide to go with, in today's day and age, it's data, gigabytes for everything. There's not really texting or minutes anymore. If you have an iPhone, awesome. You can iMessage and FaceTime just using data and Wi-Fi. But if you don't have an iPhone, or honestly, even if you do, I highly recommend downloading the app WhatsApp. It's the most popular app used around the world outside of the US because you can call and text via data or Wi-Fi. In a lot of other countries, even restaurants or shops will list their WhatsApp on their website or their Instagram, and then you can text them for reservations to ask questions, anything like that. So I highly, highly recommend downloading WhatsApp before you go and also any other communication apps that use data or Wi-Fi. Now really quickly before we wrap this video up, I have talked about all your different options of what you should do, but let me quickly cover what you should not do. It used to be really popular to order prepaid international phones like those little burner brick phones, but in today's day and age, they're not really reliable and they don't really work as well as just getting an international SIM card from Amazon or in the country that you're at, like I described before, and just putting it in the phone that you use regularly. And make sure if you're utilizing the Wi-Fi only option or the two phone option, you want to make sure that the phone that you have from back home is not only turned on airplane mode, but you also turn the data roaming off. This is more precautionary so that way, you know, just in case you restart your phone and it comes off airplane mode or anything, it doesn't start automatically data roaming and searching for services nearby that are going to cost you a fortune. So to wrap it up, I personally think the best and the cheapest way is to get a local SIM card once you arrive in whatever country you're going to go to. When I was backpacking Southeast Asia, a lot of times for the entire month, I think it'd be around five to ten dollars of you know unlimited gigabytes or you know a ton of gigs that I was never going to use so it really is the most economical I personally have never added on an international plan to my AT&T service just because ten dollars a day seems pretty outrageous to me especially when you can just order that Amazon SIM card $18 for the entire month. You really can't beat that. But I do have a lot of friends that utilize this option just because, you know, it's the convenience factor versus saving money. And they've never experienced any problems, whether it was AT&T or Verizon. So there you have it, how to use your cell phone internationally. I hope that your question was answered. I hope that you can choose one of those four options that I gave you, whatever works best for you. If you have any specific questions about, you know, what area you're going to or what country and what's best for that specific scenario, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'd love to help you out. Don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video helpful and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos like travel tips travel hacks or itineraries thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video